Hello, good people of YouTube. Mountbatten here. And today, we are going over a couple of dev blogs that were released yesterday. Well, yesterday, as going by the day of recording, so Thursday and Wednesday. I didn't get to them because we were talking about the Jean Bar event. But we're going to go over them today. They involve a new Japanese premium battleship along with some information update 12.7, which isn't the upcoming update at the end of July, but rather the August update, the end of August update. So we're going to go in the order that they were released. If you want to read along as I read aloud, you can find the link to these in the description down below. I will throw up any relevant images or artwork as we go through it. So the first one that was released was the uh, Japanese battle cruiser dev blog, which we already got the initial dev blog on these Japanese battle cruisers. Uh, let's see. So this is the dev blog um, that I was reading for tomorrow's video. So if you're watching uh, tomorrow, um, I just forgot to put this in. So what I'm gonna do is slice the uh, video and just this in right here for simplicity's sake and i only missed this, this top section up here so this is uh the japanese battle cruiser dev blog and they say uh new ships close testing 12.7 you can actually read along as i read aloud this time because it's up on screen people really don't want to you know just scroll real, real, real quick down to the description and click on the link all right so they say japanese researchable battleships yumahari adatara and bongo as well as Japanese premium battleship Tsurugi have been added to the game for testing. For the upcoming uh, testing session, a branch of Japanese battleships will be added to the game at Tier 8. The main battery is represented by 8 410mm guns, and at Tier 9 and 10 by 8 and then 10 457mm guns, respectively. New ships are stealthy battle cruisers relying on long-range guns. So, see, like, right around there. That's when I stopped reading this for uh, the video that this is being dropped into because I'm like, oh, it's just the same thing. They're just adding in the, the Sarugi into the dev blog. So that's where I was like, okay, cool. I'll stop there. Ain't got to waste time going over that. But then literally the next sentence. With good accuracy and higher damage per salvo, comma, as well as a new type of equipment, spotting aircraft with high precision optics. When active, this type of spotting aircraft increases not only your main battery gun's range, but also their accuracy. So do they say how much it increases the accuracy in the parameters down here? So let's just go look at the tin, the bongo, which funny name. So spotting aircraft with high precision optics, 65 seconds is when it's active for 10% to the range, max shell dispersion, Minus 20%. Oh my god. That is better than Deadeye. That's better than Deadeye. Because Deadeye was 10% if you weren't detected. And now with this, it's 20% and you can be detected. So is that the same for all of them? So tier 9, 20%. And then the tier 8, 20% too. Oh, okay, and by the way, the Bungo has 2.20 Sigma. 2.20 Sigma. That is good for a battleship. That is actually S-tier Sigma for a battleship. But the maximum dispersion is 264, and it's probably going to have the Japanese battleship dispersion, which is terrible. But you get a 20% boost to that. That's more of a boost than you get with the Yami with the legendary module and the artillery plotting room. Uh, not artillery plotting room, the aiming systems mod one. Yeah, because that's seven. And then with the um, legendary mod, that's 11. So that's 18. But apparently if you do the math, it's not actually quite like that. But all in all, that's a bigger buff than that. So like if you have Yami with a legendary mod, that is quite the buff if you have those two together but then you go with the bungo here and you get you know you can because you can still take the as far as we know of course you, might be different in the test server with super testers or whatever you can still take the aiming systems mod one mod and get a seven percent buff to your dispersion and then with this plane when it's up you get a 60 i'm sorry a 20 percent buff to your dispersion for 65 
seconds. So, um, yeah, that's a little cracked. Now, the Sarugi down here, she doesn't get the uh, aircraft or anything. She just has damage con and a repair party. This is the, this is like a proper battle cruise, but she only has six guns. So that's kind of, wow. But yeah. Okay, that's kind of crazy that they're bringing back Deadeye and then some with the Japanese battle cruisers. So, all right. These just got a lot more interesting, especially with 10, 10 457s, 10 18 inch guns on the Bungo here. You get a 20% buff to your dispersion on top of 2.20 Sigma. So, man, that's going to be a little nuts. And it's 13,500 maximum AP damage as well. So, oof. 860 meters a second. Initial initial uh, velocity too, so that that's pretty good velocity, like someone mentioned in chat. Golly, but I mean, th this is a big number. You are starting out from a big number, two two sixty four. Uh, if we want to, uh, just what is Kearsarge's two fifty five? Hmm. Yeah, but she has twelve guns. That only has ten. Uh, let's go see what's like Vermont with her twelve guns at tier ten. And this is a tier 9. Um, so let's see. Whoops. 306. But yeah, but she's out to 28. The uh, Bungo was 25. So, okay, maybe it's not that bad. Well, again, she has 10. Vermont has 12. There's no, like, 10-gun battleships to really see it with. 244 in Ohio at 27. Huh. Yeah, because then you get the... You, you can take the... Um, Amy, what, Amy says Mark. Well, Ohio's not going to have it. Uh, let me find something that's not any of these guys. Let me go find something British, so I'll have it on there. Because the... Amy says Mod 1, you get a 7% buff to your dispersion. And, like, St. Vincent with 9 guns at tier 10 has 205. But again, it has to do with, with, with the dispersion pattern as well. So, God, I don't know. I don't know. I think when you have that plane up, they're going to be incredibly accurate. And that's uh, probably going to be very scary for those 65 seconds, especially if you have the build. So, good lord. Yeah. We shall see. We shall see indeed how that comes out. Yeah, so I'm not going to read through the tier, was it tier 8 through 10 ships, but we're going to look at this new premium ship. So let's go ahead and dive right on in. So, Japanese battleship Tsurugi Tier 9. The battleship and battlecruiser design included in the new 8-8 fleet had minimal differences. Number 13 battlecruisers had practically no difference in speed from the battleships of the key class. This was beyond the scope of Japanese accepted naval tactics with the fast wing of the fleet. To increase speed and turn the number 13 class into a true battlecruiser, one option would have been to remove one of the main battery turrets. However, the construction of the number 13 class ships was cancelled after the Washington Agreement was signed. Tsurugi is a battlecruiser with powerful long-range main battery guns. She is also equipped with deep water torpedoes similar to Asashio's, but with a shorter range. The ship is also notable for its high speed and good concealment. As for her disadvantages, she has a small HP pool and weak armor, particularly around the Citadel. So the Sarugi is kind of like the true battlecruiser version of the Bungo, which is the tier 10 battleship in this split. Which is interesting too is that both of these ships have 25 millimeters of armor around their extremities, but Sarugi is losing a turret, and her guns are. I'm just double checking here, uh, real quick. Her guns are. I would assume they'd be more accurate. Ooh, interesting, 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 interesting. So, hold on, no, that's sorry. I was looking at the tier eight. I was like, mm. oh yeah, no, it, it wow. All right, so. The Bungo, which is the tier 10, her sigma is 2.20, with a maximum dispersion of 264 meters, but her range is 25 kilometers, so that's, you know, to be expected, that's the maximum dispersion at max range. But then the Sarugi, 
Her Sigma is 2.05 with a max range of 23 kilometers, but with a maximum dispersion of 234 meters. So it sounds like the dispersion is around the same as the Bungo, but her Sigma is less. Now, my main concern last time too with these Japanese battle cruisers is whether or not they are going to have the Japanese battleship dispersion pattern or dispersion pattern more similar to that of the Shikishima, which is of course you know very tied in its its battle cruiser dispersion. Because the Japanese battleship dispersion pattern is very frustrating because you have to compensate for a either a large number of average guns for the tier or a small number of large guns for the tier. So you, they get this very wonky dispersion pattern to compensate for that. And the Sarugi, she's a tier 9, so I, I can see why she's not as accurate as the Bungo, but she has six guns. 3 by 2 457s. So she only has six of them. Six gun ships are pretty frustrating. Especially when it comes to battleships, because they have a longer reload time. And, you know, normally in a battleship, of course, you know, about a third of the shells are going to go into the water in most cases. But when you have battleships that have, you know, nine guns, twelve guns, it's not a huge deal. But when you start getting down to six, that really starts to hurt when you have, you know, two or three of your shells go in the water. So, mm, now they are four, four, four fifty sevens. I'm going to assume they are, of course, you know, Japanese AP, which is pretty good. Yeah, it is 13,500. Um, is their maximum damage? Initial velocity 860 meters a second. Okay. With a 23 kilometer range, that's pretty decent. Now, the reload time is 28 seconds, which is pretty good base. Of course, you can take the reload module get that down even further so that's going to be pretty workable there too but i think it's really going to come down to the, the dispersion pattern i'm getting a sense that it may not be terribly bad but it's going to be like just to that point to where it's frustrating enough to where it's super annoying to use but at the end of the day it'll get the job done so the other interesting thing is that she has deep order torpedoes 2x4 610 millimeter torps and they can only hit of course battleships and aircraft carriers because they're deep waters they have a range of 15 kilometers as things funny they're like oh yeah it's got a shorter range it's still 15 kilometers maximum damage 20,967 and they reload in 150 seconds so of course when you're dealing with battleships that well, shoot at 15 kilometers, or of course in a drive-by, that's going to be your ace up the sleeve. It's going to be interesting to see where they are mounted at. It looks like they're mounted amidships in the uh, image that was provided with this article, but yeah. Max speed of 35 knots, which is nice. Uh, of course, you can throw the speed flag on there, get it up even faster. She has damage con and repair party, so there is no you know, spotter or engine boost or anything like that. And of course, they said she outright does have bad armor, so this will be interesting to take a look at when she gets into the game. So an interesting ship, one that I'll be watching very closely, but we shall see. All right, so moving on to the second dev blog, 12.7. They say new dockyards, second iteration of the concealed maneuvers battle type, and other news, closed test 12.7. I think it's interesting that we're talking about the second iteration of concealed maneuvers even before we have the first iteration of this battle type in game. Like, 12.6 hasn't come out yet. They haven't seen how the first round of testing is going to go besides on the test server. And now they're already like, oh yeah, you know, we, we, we got the second one ready to go already. All right. So the Lucian is going to be the next dockyard ship in the Tanyon dockyard. They say the construction of consists of 35 phases, 30 of which can be completed via the dockyard combat mission groups. Combat missions can be completed during updates 12.7, 12.8, as well as the first three weeks of update 12.9. The dockyard itself will last until the start of update 12.10. So that is, God, uh, August, September, and then the first three weeks of the October update. And then you have until the end of the October update, the beginning of the November uh, update, to you know purchase it with the blooms. 
Uh, Lucian, it's interesting what they're doing with her. It's She's kind of in a Sevastopol situation where it seems that they don't know what to do with her. Like, they literally gave her the Sevastopol heal. So, yeah, I'm not sure on this one yet, fellas, but we will, of course, be taking a look at that when she does get out. So, the Concealed Maneuver second round of testing. We're seeing a couple of familiar faces return. The Taiho and the Essex are returning. These were the Tier 9 ships of their respective branches, Taiho of the Japanese uh, carriers, and then Essex of the American carriers. They are back, but as Tier 10 ships. So, that's interesting. I thought that perhaps they are going to be reintroduced as, well, odd tier ships, but it looks like they're going to be Tier 10s. So, they say, in Update 12.7, the temporary battle type can still maneuvers, which first appealed in Update 12.6, which isn't out yet, will be available again. Its main purpose is to test new mechanics for aircraft carrier squadrons, the airdrop sea mines, and the smoke curtain generator. In this iteration, it will be possible to test the mechanics on two aircraft carriers that were previously removed from the game, Taiho and Essex. They will be available for rent for completing a special combat mission. So I haven't, unfortunately, gotten around to trying out the concealed maneuvers on the public test server. I'm just going to have to see what it's like when uh, the 12.6 gets here. So I did played a bit on stream mine's dig it dropped on my massachusetts and alabama um however the arming time apparently was so long i just simply sailed out of it they seemed easy to destroy too because you would just drop your your depth charges on them again i only played it for two rounds that's just my general impression at the two rounds so take that with a grain of salt but i will be trying this out to win this comes up so again it looks like they have the same equipment as the ships do in testing. Now, is it Concord Dawn or Concord Bridge and then whatever the Japanese one is called? Same thing. Essex has the minefield. They call a special squadron. They fly over, drop the mines. Taiho has the smoke curtain generator. Works the same way as beforehand. So, it does say in the new iteration of concealed maneuvers, it will be possible to go into battle at the helm of a submarine. We've added the ability for them to interact with minefields. Each mine will have an underwater tether attached to it, and upon contact with it, the mine will explode and cause damage to the sub. The amount of damage, as well as the probability of causing critical damage, will depend on the distance between the submarine and the mine. That's interesting. That's a new way to deal with submarines. You know, if you spot a submarine in your carrier, simply surround the man with mines. That's, you know, that sounds pretty neat. I'll give him that. I'm interested now. And... Probably the biggest sticking point with me for this update, Clan Battles. The 22nd season of Clan Battles, Anaconda, will start on August 23rd. Battles will be held in 7v7 format on Tier 10 ships and Super Ships. Why? 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 Like, oh my god, I can't believe they're bringing Super Ships back to Clan Battles. Now, still, uh, CVs and submarines are not allowed. It says right now on the only restriction is no more than one super ship per team. It seems to be a very weird take. It's really, they just went through a very uh, in-depth restriction system for the current season of clan battles, which has led to some pretty interesting uh, tactics like we showed earlier in this week. And it's been a very aggressive, push-heavy season. With like a lot of double Schroders up at Higher Storm, which is where we're at right now. But super ships, why? 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 <laughs> that season was absolutely miserable. I hadn't seen burnout that bad since CVs were allowed in clan battles. Super ships are ships that are designed to be overpowered. They are designed to be broken. Alright? And you're putting them in the most competitive game mode in the game. A mode that's supposed to be about skill and coordination and tactics. But if you have a super ship and you press the funny button at the right time, you can win the battle. It, 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 it was not a fun time. It was a miserable experience. I came out of that season of clan battles with a, a, an un settable hate against the Conde. Alright? I hated that ship after clan battles. I hated it during clan battles, I should clarify, but 
it took me forever to to make amends with amends with that ship because it, it made that season of clan battles so freaking miserable this is a terrible decision i can't believe they're making it again this is something that's going to absolutely drive another batch of the veteran more competitive players away from this game because i think the big exodus of these veteran highly skilled players that you know that they like playing clan battles and such was the inter the introduction of super ships into clan battles because it was too frustrating to, to play with Again, burnout was crazy that season of clan battles. We were literally fighting the same three teams at High Storm over and over and over and over and over again. Every now and then you'd run into some random clan, but it was literally three clans over and over and over again because no one wanted to play with super ships. And that's what all the chatter about was uh, in the Discord and on the forums and on Reddit and such was how miserable it was for that season of clan battles and you're doing it again wargaming I, I i why why do you just have to have super ships included in in clan battles do you just have to have them included in everything which i mean they have said they want every class to participate in every mode of the game but super ships again are inherently broken that's literally in their design you, you take them to clear, into random battles because they're, they're broken, they're OP ships, but you pay for them because they are very credit heavy to maintain and you know the, the post battle service and all that. Just I, I'm just so man, I don't even know how to describe the the emotions that I am feeling right now at this decision. I hope they make a 180 on it because if not, it's going to again drive another large amount of competitive veteran players away from the game, at least for some time. So that's happening. We are getting the unique upgrades for Petra Pavlovsk and Rick Tolfin. This update, well, update 12.7, so not to this coming update, but the next one. So Petra Pavlovsk is getting AP shells with ballistic tips, which increases the shell damage by 10% for her AP shells. However, it reduces, I'm sorry, increases the dispersion by 7%. Oh, no, I'm sorry, it reduces the dispersion by 7%, so you get more accurate shells. But she loses one of her consumables of each, so the, the radar and her heal. She gets one less charge of that. That's a pretty big trade-off there. And then Richtofen gets aerodynamic torpedo stabilizers, which increases the torpedo bomber's HP by 15% and increases the, the torpedo damage by 10% and reduces the arming distance by 10% as well. Hmm. Pretty nice one there, because the Rick Tolfin, uh she has some pretty nice torps. And then the last thing we're going to talk about is an interesting new concept, new mechanic, which is trade-ins. So for the first two weeks of version 12.7, a special tab will be available in the Armory where you can exchange certain tier 5 to 10 premium and special ships for a significant discount in the purchase of other premium and special ships with doubloons. Rare ships that are difficult or impossible to obtain are exchanged for larger discounts, like if you have a Georgia or a Jean Bar in Alaska, you get a bigger discount on the purchase of your new ship. If the exchange ship offers a discount greater than the value of the purchase ship, the exchange takes place without additional payment. The difference in value is not compensated. Ooh. We will share the details about trade-ins in a 12 point in, in 12.7 at a later date. You know what? I kind of like this idea because there are plenty of situations in this game where we have older premium ships that they get power corrupt, they get just completely outclassed by more modern premium ships. And of course you're stuck with that. So the ability to take this older premium ship and trade it in on a new one doesn't sound like a bad idea. now. Of course, the stinger is that if your ship that you're trading in is worth more than the ship that you're trading it for, you don't get the doubloon difference, which that's a real, mmm, I don't know about that, Wargaming. Obviously, they don't want you to do that because you could, you know, just dump 80 bucks on the game and keep trading in your, uh, your premium ship for the new model every go-round. Just like a car dealership now, essentially, but you don't get the... The uh, value and difference. So, like, if you did have, like, I don't know, you had, like, a freaking, uh, what is it? The, uh, the Ford, uh, GT car. 
that they made in 2005, you're going to train that in on like a GT Mustang or something like that. That obviously has a, a lot more value than a GT Mustang. The dealership would obviously have to compensate you in the 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 the, uh, the difference. But um, yeah, you don't get that here with the war gaming. <laughs> but yeah, I'm not completely against the idea because if you have some old premium ships that you don't like anymore, they don't play anymore, that are just port decorations, and you don't care about um, having more ships in port for the anniversary event. Sure, sounds like a pretty interesting idea, and I think one that could be pretty nice for the players, but I will be interested in hearing more about this when they uh, release the article on it. So guys, that's pretty much it for this dev blog. If, there are a couple more things about some upcoming events and things like that, but if you want to check that out, you can check out the link in the description down below. Hope you guys have a great Saturday and a great rest of your weekend. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to drop a like, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel. We're on our way to 50,000 subscribers thanks to you guys. We're getting very close to that goal, and I cannot thank you guys enough for that. Hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. Hope to catch you guys in the next one.